the standardization is actually essential. If you're sharing the data and trying to compare it, you know, apples with apples, pears with pears, and you also need, you know, for example, dates. Do you use United Kingdom <coughs> dates, USA dates? You don't mix them up, otherwise you get wrong months when you're doing monthly analysis, for example. You also need uh, data quality management. You need to ask yourself several questions. For example, completeness. What data is actually missing? For conformity, what data is not stored in non-standard format? So we're back to your dates again. And consistency. What data values actually give you conflicting information? And accuracy. What data is out of date? When you're actually running quarterly analysis or yearly analysis, when does your year begin? Is it your financial year? Or is it the year when you first, the month you first start to get the client? Or actually January the 1st? Then you've also got duplicates to consider. I mean, do you actually need them? Or do you want to delete them? Et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> and the integrity of the data. What data is actually missing or not even referenced? Now you've got your standards and your data quality management start to define what you're actually going to do with the data. For example, your reporting needs, your key performance indicators, you know, are you going to work out how many deliveries you've got on time, your system uptime is going to be 99.9%, .9%, your pipeline versus your sales ratio analysis. Once you've got all that, then you'll be actually going to the next stage. You need to be proactive with that data. by means of archiving, also sorting out your reporting, your trending analysis, your battery analysis of the reports, alerting so you can actually send alerts out to say when the batteries are low, etc. etc. Find out where it is and if for example courier companies if it's outside their range, what's the driver been doing? Also you can try and automate your data quality management by automatic <coughs> duplicate finds write some queries to actually get the correct date range out of your data. And now you've got the standardization, you can use a common tool set across all technologies, whether you're using an Apple platform, or Windows, or Android. And when you've got a proactive strategy, it actually saves you time. It ensures more reliability of information, and ultimately helps your business workers make better decisions. Is where people are, you know, predictability. I mean, for example, here we're able to predict bulk logging devices based on pattern analysis and alert the customers when, when this is due. We can also create resources here so we actually meet our SLAs. You can also uh, automate your data quality management for automatic audit trails. And with this feedback, you can focus on improving performance of the device and therefore your company. I mean, the ultimate goal in all this is for people, processes and technology to operate in harmony. Where do we use it? Well, we see data as being a combination of many sources. Data that we collect in terms of the services that we offer today are very much about what's also said and heard. So what we collect in help desks, what we terms language and terminology you may use in your business, software definitions you may use, it might be terminology you use in your business to describe something. You know, a, a ruggedized device can be described as HHT, as a device, as a gun, as a brick, it's got other names to certain users, but the reality of it is we try and pick up all those nuances. So for us, data collection isn't just about some of the more manipulative data in terms of classic data, it's also about what's being said and what's being heard. We use that data to start modelling. Now normally what we're doing when we're modelling, um, as Michael mentioned, is round about service levels and performance. So we're building up pictures of how the service will run, how the service may behave. And again, there are nuances in there in terms of how people use the service. So user behaviour is a classic example. Ruggedised devices, <coughs> rugged devices, we move more into BYOD. We're tracking the behaviour type of users by the type of device they use. So ruggedized users, we know by a certain demographic, for example, the likelihood of that user to break the device. If you've got a person in your organization who's normally between 45 and 55 years old, been in your business probably more than five years, they have a much higher risk of breaking your device. 
much less risk if they're left-handed. So you can start to do some quite interesting profiles <coughs> in the data together. It's how you want to use it. So if you, you know, people that are more used to smartphones and therefore that sort of technology, much easier to work with in terms of the help desk and help desk behaviour because they diagnose application themselves. They're more used to self-diagnosis. At the other end of the spectrum, much more training education. So what we're doing is we're blending that data set together, which is why it's also about what's heard and what's seen. We help you as customers and clients manage that the other way around. So we've done a piece of work for a client recently where we've it's going to fall off the wall. Um, we've done a piece of work for a client recently where we've actually really tailored the language in the training guide for not only just the terminology you use in your own business, but also the way you actually speak to people about training, education, etc. in terms of words that you use. So you can do some quite specific stuff with that. This has impact to you as an organization in terms of more reliability, more user adoption, and for us from running the service, it means obviously we run you a better service. You don't get the disruption that you would have had five years ago, two years ago, whatever it will be. And it works at both ends. It works at the new adoption for those who have never used technology before, and it works at the other end for those who may have rolled it up for the third, fourth, or even fifth time. So all the data being used in that regard. We're also using it, of course, root cause analysis. The key driver for us in terms of using the service is that we want to get to root cause analysis. Why is it that a user gets to a certain level of frustration with the device or the software? It might be something out of their control, it might be something in their control. So we're triangulating a lot of data around that. So typically when we see devices in the help desk at a particular time, um, where we get calls, what we're tracking is what screen are they on in the software? And what path are they taking to get to that point in the software? So what's the screen flow look like? We're also checking what the mobile network signal looks like at the same time. And we know that from the other providers. So we map out Voda, O2, EE, the others. And so we triangulate that sort of data together. So we now know in certain environments, certain customers, where they're gonna be, at what time of day, where physically they may be by street level, and also, to a point where we know how their network is going. So interactively, we can send messages to the user two to three minutes before to say, you're gonna lose coverage in a couple of minutes, carry on your work, take the signature, form the application process, but don't worry about the data not being sent because we know you're gonna be out of coverage. That stops quite a lot of flow into the repair center that we've had here because it just stops people getting frustrated with the device because suddenly it's not doing something they don't expect. And this is the other nuance of using data in terms of the people side. This is why we focus very heavily on, yes, technology to do data processing, and yes, data uh, technology to use some of the relationship work, but it's more about the human side of it and how user behavior works. That's why we major more on that side of it. It works the other way, of course. The more data we collect, the more we triangulate, the more we manage the service in that regard, the more we feed that back to you as a client or a partner, the more that you can use it to look at how you target your business. Like <coughs> Fraser talked earlier about some of the things they do around data collection and data management and how they use that technology to refine the operational performance. You know, we're using it ourselves to look at data-driven products and services. So we may offer different levels of service level on Vodafone versus O2 in certain postcodes because we know how the network behaves. We know when you combine that with software applications at certain points, that also is a very way of targeting product and development using data. So the last piece really on this is where I started, which is predictions. This is where we use it at the other end. So this is the fifth of the five phases, if you like. Predictions are rubbish. I want it to be a racing car driver, but didn't come true either. So we use a lot of that work to do forecasting and modeling. For you as the service, for us as the service, predicting what will happen and when. So again, with clients, we're taking devices out of the operation before they break. We're looking at component level manufacturing quality. We know certain devices at certain age behave in certain ways, whether that's the device, the battery, maybe the keyboard, and we're taking them out of the operation before they break. If we get it wrong, which we do, because it's a prediction, um, then there's no disruption to you, that was our error. But ultimately, if we get it right, it means that your operation runs at a certain rate or certain uptime or performance level, whatever that may well be. And we've blended that mix. We put a lot of work into probabilities around using data for that reason. So we've just taken on a customer now, we've taken about two years worth of data that they have in terms of repair them um, by where they physically operate, and we've just predicted for them what October, November and December will look like at a probability rate of around about 75%. And we've signed up to the service on that basis. 
So we're using the data to actually try and preempt what's going to happen. So you can do some quite interesting stuff with it. And that's where we're going, and that's how we use the data set. <coughs> 